Hello and welcome to the new Joy of Code. Uh, my name is Michael Curling. I'm a professor of computer science at King's College London, and I'm also one of the developers of Greenfoot. And in this video series, I will show you how you can learn to write computer programs, especially what we will do of most of the series is to write a simple, small computer game. Um, we will do that with a system called Greenfoot and a language called Stride. I will show you more about those a bit later in a moment. Uh, Stride is a language that you can use really well for learning to program if you either have never looked programmed before at all. So if you don't know anything at the moment, you're at the right place. We will start um, programming assuming you haven't done anything before. Or also if you have programmed maybe in a block-based language before, such as maybe Scratch or Alice or a similar language, that is also a good starting point for this video series. Um, Greenfoot is a system that makes it quite easy to write nice little graphical programs. Stride is a language that makes it easy to learn to start writing programs. And a bit later we will also transition into Java and have a look at a more professional language as well. Today in the first episode uh, I will show you quickly what Greenfoot is, what it can do, and what Stride is, what it looks like. And then in the next episode, we will start to write our own programs. But first, let's have a look at Greenfoot. So this here on the screen is Greenfoot. It is a programming environment that is intended for beginners to learn how to program. Uh, I will use uh, a few words of terminology in this introduction that you may not understand. Don't worry about that. If you are new to programming, you don't really have to understand the detail in this episode. Just have a look what it can do. So here on the right hand side is a diagram with the classes that are in this project. And here is an area that we call the world. Um, in this example here, I already have a scenario um, that is a little program that I have written. And when I have a class here, I can right click on it and I can create an object and put it into the world. When I have an object in the world, I can run my program and my object will do something. I can also investigate this object individually. I can see what kinds of methods it has, that is things it can do, and I can see that it can, for example, move, and I can tell it to move individually, or I can tell it to turn right and it will turn right. I can also create some more objects and put them in here. I also have here a leaf, for example, that I can create and put the leaf in here. Um, and I can then investigate uh, what these objects are. I can, as we have seen, um, make them do things. I can make them act. I can um, interrogate them. I can ask how many leaves they have eaten. And it will answer me and say zero. It hasn't eaten any leaves at the moment. And I can also inspect this object, which means I can open it up and look inside and see all the fields that it has inside. If you know something about programming, you may know what that means. If you don't know anything about programming, you don't know what the significance of this is at the moment, but don't worry about that. We will get back to that later. Um, I can invoke methods that have parameters. For example, I can get it to put a number of leaves in, and then I can run the program, and my wombats run around and eat my leaves. At the beginning, when we start to learn to programming, we will work with simple scenarios like this one, but we will then fairly quickly get to a bit more interesting game. So the things we can get to after a while are games like this. This is a typical sort of 1980s style arcade game. This is an asteroids game. I can fly my spaceship around. I'm controlling it with my keyboard here. I can try to fire at the asteroids and try to destroy them. Um, and, if, and so these are the kinds of games. Um, whoop, now I just ran into an asteroid. These are the kinds of games that we can write with Greenfoot. So this is uh, what we will get at when we work with Greenfoot for a while. Um, the programs we write in Greenfoot don't have to be games. Anything that is made up of two-dimensional graphics as its output, for example, this piano here that I have on screen can be done in Greenfoot. So if I run this, then I can press keys on my keyboard and you see I have a playable piano here. Um, the way that is done is that every one of those 
keys here is an object and I have programmed it to produce certain sounds. Um, the other class of application that can really easily be done in Greenfoot are simulations. Here I have a, an ant simulation um, which I have programmed uh, for my ants to come out of the ant hill and run around and they go and collect food and they form trails. There's some kind of emergent behavior here in my um, program that is really interesting to play with and to investigate. That is another thing we can get to later in this video series. Uh, the performance of Greenfoot is good enough that you can have really sophisticated animations. For example here I have made a scenario that simulates some kind of particles that are flying around. I'm showing you this only to show you um, that the performance of the system is good enough that you can have really sophisticated um, fast-moving good-looking applications. In this case I've got a few hundred objects on screen. Every one of those particles of course is an object um, that fly around and, and are displayed in real time. Um, let me quickly show you how we program this. Here I have a scenario when I run this nothing happens at all and that is because in all the other scenarios I had already written some code and here I have not. So if I open the editor for this for this bird. It's a hawk actually, so I've, it's called hawk. I can see here's an act method um, that uh, is empty at the moment and that is why this hawk doesn't do anything when I click my run button. So I can here now um, insert quite easily um, a, an instruction. So I've told this hawk to move and now when I click the button it moves. Um, in fact I can now also, if I want to, have multiple of those hawks here and put them into my scenario. And if I run my turn, they all move across the screen. This is what um, it looks like to program in Greenfoot. I insert an instruction here. Um, and then I go back here and I run my scenario. Let us look at a little bit and the last one here is now another simulation that I can run that is a predator-prey simulation that shows how um, some creatures, in this case the blue ones are foxes, um, run around and eat my rabbits. But what I really want to show you is what the code looks like. So this is stride. This is what the stride language looks like. Um, so here I have just opened this to show you a bit more a complex program. Here is a lot of code here already that is written there. This is the editor of the stride language and when I program this I can take these instructions and put them somewhere else. So I can, when I want to edit my program, I can move them around or I can go here, I hit a single key and I insert an if statement. I can type something in here, I can insert a loop by just hitting a single button um, and so on. I can insert an assignment um, and so on. In this case I'm getting some errors because I'm not actually writing valid code here but this gives you an idea what um, editing in stride is like and what the stride language looks like. For example here you see I can manipulate my program with a mouse by dragging my statements around or I can manipulate it with keys by just hitting a key on my keyboard and inserting some statements. Um, we will learn in this video series how to write this kind of code to create these kinds of scenarios, these kinds of programs that I have just shown you. If this looks interesting to you, come back for the next episode and uh, we will talk about how to do this. So this was the quick overview of Greenfoot. Now you have a rough impression of what kinds of things you can do with Greenfoot, what the system itself looks like, what the stride language looks like. And now we're ready to actually start to write our own first program. That's what we will do in the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye bye.